This is going to be a really quick video. I'm not going to cover the entire thing. It gets pretty in depth and it assumes you have some knowledge that you don't quite have at this point. So here are just the key takeaways from this lesson. When we're finished, I just need to be sure that you're comfortable with identifying what types of polygons have central angles and what a central angle is, and that irregular polygons they don't have central angles. They behave a little differently. That's pretty much the only takeaway you need to have from this lesson. So notice we're looking at a point out here floating around in space and then a point inside of this, they tell us it's a square. So that means we're dealing with a regular polygon here. All four of these sides are exactly equal to each other. I can tick them equal. What angle measure surrounds point A? Well, again, I'm not loving the wording of that question because there is no angle there, but around any point, we could do a full 360 degree rotation. That's what they're getting at there. So what are the angle measures that surround point F? So again, I could rotate completely around that point and I would get 360 degrees. So what's the difference between points A and F? At point A, we have only the point. At point F, it's been split into four parts. So you can see around this rotation that each of these angles will be able to find their measures individually, but if we add all four of them, it should total 360. So here are some facts about angles of a polygon. The center of the polygon is the point that is equidistant from every vertex. And I want you to go ahead and just say, these are regular. Okay, so we're dealing with regular polygons. The central angle of the polygon is the angle that's made at the center of the polygon by any two adjacent vertices of the polygon. Adjacent, we've seen adjacent angles already, so that word's coming up again. It's next to, okay? So if you have vertices that are next to each other, let me give you an example. Come up here, and vertex C, the vertices are the corners of the polygon. Vertex C is adjacent to vertex D. They're next to one another. And if you go from the center of the polygon to those vertices, just grabbing a highlighter. So from the center of the polygon to each of those two vertices, you're gonna find that this is the central angle here, okay? Um, the sum of the central angles in any polygon is going to be 360. Those angles are centered around point F up there. And the measure of the central angle then in a regular polygon is gonna be 360 divided by the number of sides. So let's just come up here and we know that we're dealing with a square. So we have four sides and everybody knows that 360 divided by four is going to give us 90, 90, 90, and 90. So if we draw the vertices from, sorry, if we draw segments from the vertices to the center of the square, we end up with four right angles there. So each of those central angles is 90. So let's just draw the central angle in each of these polygons. They are regular, that's important, and we'll determine their measures. So this polygon has five sides, it's a pentagon. And so the central angle is gonna come from the center to two adjacent vertices. That is the central angle of that polygon. And since it's regular, I could do that. Now we don't have to do it over and over again. I'll just do it on the pentagon. I could do that for the other vertices. And you can see that we split it up into five equal pieces. Since it's regular, these are all gonna be congruent to one another. The triangles have the same shape. They're congruent. So calculate the measure of the central angle. Well, we would just do 360 divided by five, and that is 72. So we saw in a square, each of the four central angles was 90, 
in a pentagon, each of these five central angles is going to be 72. All right, so we wanna do each polygon. So here we have eight sides. We have an octagon. And here would be an example of one of the eight central angles right there. So to get that measure, we would want to do 360 divided by eight, and that's going to give us 45. So in an octagon, each of the angles is 45 degrees. Okay, just 360 divided by the number of sides. All right, so what are the measures of the base angles in each of the isosceles triangles in the Pentagon? Well, they're sneaking this word in here. I know you guys come to this class with prior knowledge, but let's just review what an isosceles triangle is from previous math classes and know that we'll study them in much more detail later. But an isosceles triangle is a triangle with two equal, or we call them congruent sides, and it's perfectly symmetrical. If you were to fold it right down the middle, it would fold on top of itself, an isosceles triangle. So since it's symmetrical, this angle down here is going to be congruent to that angle. If I fold it in half, that angle would match up with this one. These angles are called, and we're really getting out in front of ourselves here in this lesson, but these are called the base angles of the isosceles triangle. And notice they're the angles where the congruent sides touch that third side. So what are the measures of the base angles in the triangle in the pentagon? Okay, well, let's go back up to the pentagon. So here we go. This is 72 degrees. And there's one more thing that you have to know about triangles that they're assuming you know, and that's in any triangle at all. If you add the measures of the three angles together, if we add A, B, and C, you always get 180 degrees in a triangle. The sum of the angles is 180. So if you come up to the pentagon, we know that the distance from the center to each vertex of this polygon is equal. Those sides are equal to each other, so I do have an isosceles triangle there for sure. And then if I take the fact that all three of these angles add up to 180, and I subtract 72 from 180, that leaves me with 108. And then that's going to have to be split evenly across the bottom of the triangle. So divide that by two, and each of those base angles would be 54 degrees and 54 degrees, okay? So in a pentagon, each of the base angles is going to measure 54 degrees. So what about the base angles of the triangle in the octagon? Well, once again, if we come back up to the octagon, this is 45, so we'll subtract 45 from 180, and then we'll split that remaining value in half in order to get the measure of the base angles. So I'll write what, down what I'm doing on this problem. So it's gonna be 180 minus 45, so that leaves us with 135, and then we'll take the 135 and split it in half in order to get the measures of those two base angles. And this time we do get a decimal, okay? So the measures of the base angles in the octagon in each of those little triangles that are formed is 67.5 degrees, okay? All right, I'm just gonna finish up right here and then this is all you have to do with respect to this lesson. So what they're getting at here is that there's gonna be two ways in order to find the base angles of those isosceles triangles. Let's just go back to the Pentagon and look at it this way. So in the Pentagon, when we had our isosceles triangle, we used the fact that that was 72. We subtracted from 180 and split the remaining difference in half to get the measures of each of the angles. The other way to do it is to remember that we know how to find the sum of all five of these interior angles. We can do that in any polygon, and in a regular polygon, they're all the same. In order to find the sum of all the angles, we use the formula 180 times n minus two. So that would be 180, we've got five sides, times five minus two, or 180 times three, and in any pentagon at all, 
all five of those angles will always total 540 degrees. Well, if I wanna get the measure of each of the blue angles, just one interior angle, I could take the 540, and since they're all equal, I could divide by five. 540 divided by five is gonna leave me with 108 degrees. So each of the interior angles, you did this in the previous video, are 108. Well, since this is an isosceles triangle, and since I can split this pentagon up into five of those isosceles triangles that are all exactly the same. This only works because it's regular, okay? This segment is going to cut that 108 degree angle exactly in half. And half of 108 is 54 and 54. And you can see that those are the two base angles that we got over here when we were looking just at the isosceles triangle. So the fact that it's symmetrical lets us know that these segments drawn from the center to the vertices will be cutting that angle in half, okay? Um, all right, so what's your takeaway though from this lesson? It's kind of a quirky final little lesson. Your takeaway really is that in a regular polygon, any polygon whatsoever that's regular, that one doesn't look regular, but if I tick all the sides it is, if we take that and we draw that triangle, this hexagon has six sides. I'm able to make six triangles that would all be congruent to each other. And each of these angles here is called a central angle and those would all be equal to one another. That's all you really need to know is that a regular polygon 